In this video, I want to talk about the stationary assumption of a time series analysis. More important, we want to figure out why we care about the stationary assumption. The stationary assumption has three components. First, we assume that a time series data set has a constant mean. Sometimes the mean of a time series will be written as ext or mu for simplicity purpose. So we assume that a time series data set has a constant mu. Similar to the first assumption, the second assumption is we assume that a time series data set has a constant variance. Sometimes we will write the variance as VARXT, as you can see on this slide. Some classmates may have a question. I can understand that a time series changes around a constant mean, but uh, isn't it a very strong assumption that a time series changes with uh, a constant variance? It is a very strong assumption. That's why the time series analysis researchers developed other models like uh, autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity model to analyze data sets without a constant variance. But uh, the autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity model will be the topic for later classes. At this moment, we just accept the second assumption. We assume that a time series data set has a constant variance. The last assumption is the covariance or the correlation between xt and xt minus 1 is the same for all time spots in a time series. In other words, the covariance between day 10 and day 9 is as same as the covariance between day 100 and day 99. These are the stationary assumptions of a time series analysis. The next question is important. Why do we care about the stationary assumptions? The main reason is we want to use these assumptions to derive some properties of AR, MA, ARMA, or ARIMA models. Let's see an example. Let's say we want to build an AR1 model. We want to use yesterday's sales revenue to predict today's sales revenue. We can build a mathematical equation as you can see in equation one on this slide, right? xt equals to beta zero plus beta one times xt minus one plus epsilon t. xt is today's sales revenue we are trying to predict. Beta zero is the intercept of the linear model. Beta one is the coefficient. xt minus one is yesterday's sales revenues. Epsilon t is the error term of this linear model. Do you still remember we have some properties of uh, the error term epsilon t when we study linear model? We assume that uh, epsilon t, or the error terms, follows a normal distribution, and the mean of the error terms of a linear model is zero. So please keep this in mind. If we have an equation y, we can calculate the mean on both sides of equation 1, which brings equation 1 to equation 2, as you can see here. Ext equals to E beta 0 plus beta 1 xt minus 1 plus epsilon t. Notice that the right side of equation 2 is a combination of additions so we can further split this combination into mean of each component, as you can see here. Beta zero is a constant. The mean of a constant is the constant itself. That's why E beta zero equals to beta zero itself. Beta one is also a constant. That's why we can take beta 1 out of the mean operation. Then we have a e epsilon t equals to 0. Why is that? We just said the mean of an error term in a linear model is 0. 
That's why e epsilon t equals to zero. We can transform equation two to equation three, as you can see on this slide. We just learned the stationary assumptions. We said a time series data set has a constant mean, which means e x t and e x t minus one are equal. They are both equal to mu. We can further transform equation three to equation four, as you can see on this slide. After some algebra operation, we can get equation five and equation six. Notice that we have three bars between equation three and equation four. We also have three bars between equation five and equation six. The three bars are a mathematical symbol to show that two equations are equivalent. Now we get equation 5 and 6 based on the stationary assumptions. Let's use the example to see how we can use them in practice. When you perform the linear regression analysis, the software will usually report the intercept value and the coefficient value directly. But uh, this may not be the case when you use some packages for time series analysis in the R software. For example, if you use the ASTSA package to build a AR1 model, the software will report some values as you can see on this slide. Under AR1, we have a 0 0.6754. Let's round it to 0 0.68. This is the value for beta 1 in our model, the coefficient value. So for beta 1, the coefficient, we don't have to calculate anything. We can use the value reported by the software directly. Remember, the coefficient value is under AR1 in the software report. But uh, we don't have the intercept value. We don't have a value for beta 0. Instead, the software reported a value under x mean, the mean of the time series data set is 14.5947. Let's round it to 14.59. This is actually the value for mu in our model. Now we get the mu value, we get the beta 1 value. How can we calculate the beta 0? We use equation 6, we just derived based on the stationary assumptions. Beta 0 equals to mu times 1 minus beta 1. We already know the mu value. We already know the beta 1 value from the software. We can calculate the beta 0 value. Eventually, beta 0 equals to 4.74. So after these calculations, we can build the final AR1 model. Xt equals to 4.74 plus 0 0.68 times xt minus 1 plus the error term epsilon t. This is how we use the result from the stationary assumption to build the real model in a time series analysis. Also, you can use other stationary assumptions to find out the other properties of a, a AR, MA, or ARIMA model. I will not repeat in this lecture. I listed the PowerPoint under this video's description section. For interested classmates, you can download the PowerPoint and then take a look at how we can derive other properties of AR or MA models based on the stationary assumptions.